record. Yeah, so um yeah, you meant so you you're doing some crazy things like the rocket engines. Um is that you got that to work already? You Uh no, that that's still a project that I'm experimenting with, but the flow testing models are uh they seem encouraging. It's flowing as I expected. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And always you said you're a, you're a progr you program CNC for a living. That's what you do. Yeah. Mhm. Mm mhm. Yeah. So, um, s let's see. So I wanted to ask first, like, what's you know, uh, in terms of teaching, have you have you done much teaching, or I mean, you do you do teaching in your videos? That's for one. Uh, yeah, in the videos, I like to share any helpful information I can with people. And other than that, my only teaching experience would be um, I helped teach a children's taekwondo class for almost one year. And and I helped teach a community welding class in high school. Ah, very cool, very cool. So what, um, what's, um, you know, in terms of participating in the STEAM camps, what's, what's exciting to you? Is that, is that something you'd like to do? Um, I mean... Yeah, it sounds like a really fun opportunity, and the curriculum that you present and the whole, um, the whole purpose of your organization I really liked. Which so tell me tell me more specifically which parts of it because we're like we're all over the the map in terms of all the different things we do, uh, so what what stands out for you? Um, well, it seemed like most of the curriculum had to do with like CNC stuff mm -hmm. and programming and electronic stuff, and uh -huh. that all looked really cool to me. Yeah, 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 excellent. Um, yeah, so maybe maybe we could go. Do you have any questions about how this this whole thing works? I mean, I didn't tell you too much, uh, too much detail. Any any questions that stand out? I think I sent you the the thing, the, the write up from the Axiom people. Is did I send you that? Yes, you did. Yeah. Yes. Does that all make sense, or do you have any questions? Um, that makes sense. I guess the questions that I would have starting out would be just uh, how I go about starting to learn the curriculum. Well, the the step number one is that we all create it. I mean, we've got a bunch of it in terms of... Oh, we of, still need to create the, the curriculum initially? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, okay, okay. what we have is... Let's take a look at Let's take a look at directly on um, on that page because it, it kind of goes through the detail of that. So let's go to the uh, curriculum page and let, let's okay. discuss that to see because what we need to do is get all of us together. So I'm expecting that we get together about 12 people and... We bring it together. I mean, obviously, we've done a lot of it, like the universal axis, the controllers, like the 3D printer parts, and all that. Uh, but a lot of it is detail. Like, for example, to add the plotter pen to make circuits. You know, we haven't done that. We haven't built an electric motor. We haven't done battery packs. Uh, we haven't done a lot of the stuff that we're proposing, and it's 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 pretty focused and tight. Uh, but we definitely have a lot of experience, and it's for us. It would be easy learning, but the idea would be that we all create it together. So, okay. are you um, looking at the curriculum page? Here's the uh, yes, you want the, the wiki dot open source ecology page. Yep. Steam camp curriculum. Yep. Yep. So Steam camp curriculum. So let's go to the. If you go to, well, actually, let me let me just share my screen. That might be just easy for you to look at what I'm looking at here. So, okay. So that's the. Essentially, universal axis, universal controller, 3D printer, circuit plotter, CNC mill, where it's it's kind of crazy because we're going to build our own electric motor that we then put on the CNC mill. So that's some refinement right there, by all means. So um, would you be wanting to build stepper motors, or are you thinking of a different yeah. strategy? Then? Well, here for the CNC mill, we're, right now we're looking for an axial flux motor, but, but stepper motors, I mean, we'd love to do that if possible, like to start replacing the parts... On the 3D printer, like, did you see that that one prototype stepper motor from in the, one of the links? The 3D printed stepper motor. I didn't motor? see that one. Sorry, did you? I did not see that one. Okay, uh, let me let me show you that one. But yeah, if you talk about stepper motors, there's this one that I found that was 3D printed stepper motor. This one is this is for real. Yeah. It's um, this is a real thing. Look at this thing. Um, so that's the close. This is actually a form factor of an EMA 17 with these magnets, but 
you know, it needs refinement. I mean, this thing here overheats, but it's amazing. It's got a built-in planetary gear down. So wow. it's like, wow, this is cool. I'm actually get, trying to get this guy. He hasn't responded to me uh, regarding participating. But for the Steam Camp curriculum here with this 3D printed motor, no, that would be just the axial flux, a very simple 3D printable thing. I talked to some experts and they say that we can get probably 95% efficiency with a brushless design. It won't be um, energy optim intensity, like uh, energy density optimized, but it will be efficiency optimized. So, because you need some heat dissipation there and with plastic you have some limits, but that's one of the things. So with a circuit plotter we could do an Arduino Uno. With the universal controller and some power elements we can do a DC power source to, to power the 3D printed motor. Uh, we can do a battery charger with a circuit plotter, scalable battery pack out of 18650 cells. Uh, you, you put a whole bunch of these battery packs together. If we have 12 people showing up to an event and we build 12 of them, and we can do a welder by simply connecting them together, like as a scalable battery pack. Um, and then with the universal controller, you can do a simple power controller for a cordless welder. So that's the kind of uh, crazy curriculum that gets us exposed to design and CNC and electronics and mechanical design and some power electronics and then we get into the five project base. Uh, does that make sense? Yeah. But here, like, okay, yes. here's the here's the deal. Like, I broke this down completely, so in that same document, um, if I go into edit mode, the third page shows the breakdown. Okay, if we're going to deliver this, we need modules of curriculum that look like this. Page 3. So, for the 3D printer, you know, build instructions, D3D simple, universal access, uh, universal controller, simple extruder. We don't, for example, have a simple extruder. I mean, that's e relatively easy to do, but someone would have to take the time to actually shake that down. We, we've typically worked with, I don't know if you're familiar with E3D Titan Arrow. No. We use that extruder. Um, quick plug, wireless wire, wire, wiring harness, and then we do a, like a little 3D printed hacksaw blade holder as a first example of a functional cool print. Circuit plotter, need build instructions, we, would, uh, we need a quick attach head, Marlin plotter software, that's people have done that with Marlin, you know Marlin? Uh, yes. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so Marlin. Uh, circuit plotter pen tool, like that's, people have done that. Etching system, people have done that. Flat cam file generation, STL cam files, Arduino Uno etched board, like we end up with an Arduino Uno etched board um, as a practical project. That's well doable using simple circuit plotting. Um, have you seen that by any chance? There's, there's yeah, so are you talking about like print, printing onto the surface and then etching it? Yeah. Okay. And then drilling and then building that. Yeah. Uh, for the drone, yes, drone body, drone firmware, drone hardware. There's a lot of different drones we can pick from. I haven't found a person yet to do that. Um, thinking about drone, drone, drone Android app, uh, using a cell phone for camera. There's one out of uh, Spain. That it's called Flown. They use they use a cell phone app to control it. Uh, that's one possibility. Uh, I haven't contacted the people. Um, more in the yeah, with the circuit plotter. There's more like um, learning about the smart controller. Like it has a display screen, so we can learn to program it. Um, there's details like we use OSE Linux so that all the software that we use is on it with all libraries like for FreeCAD and KeyCAD and so forth. Uh, have you heard of FreeCAD, Key, KeyCAD and FreeCAD? Uh, yeah, yeah, I've got KeyCAD on my computer. Yeah. Um, so there's RAMS plus LCD temperature logger. That's a simple application we could do as a simple uh, circuit, just installing a circuit and some code, install, installing a temperature logger circuit. Um, I was going to do this. Um, so this is kind of like the modules that, that I think show like absolute ma max power out of a small package. So for example, uh, just using some MOSFETs or IGBTs, do a, do a AC light dimmer with the universal controller that we already have on a 3D printer. So uh, let me actually go to some of the links. Uh, in the... Um, 
on the wiki page there at the bottom is all the prior art have you clicked through those links i looked at the wikipedia page but i didn't click through everything okay um, i'll show you I'll a couple of a couple of things like okay. for example uh when we talk about the controller so things like universal axis that's that's our CNC axis that we've done actually and this is the small version but we've done up to two inches of that um, we made bigger printers with it we made a CNC torch table using that using what like one inch axes so if you do the same kind of a design of an axis using one inch you get to a torch table like that looks like this uh -huh. five by ten feet you can go two inches, two inch universal axis. We just built these uh, carriages. These are two inch bushings. So this is for heavy duty shafts for a heavy duty CNC mill. We didn't get too far in it. We built up to the frame. Like here's here's kind of like how the carriage looks. This is like the equivalent of the like this thing, the equivalent of the idler carriage. But these things are getting big. Like this is a full metal f frame for the larger uh, CNC machine here that we're building and welding up. Um, okay, so that's the axis. The controller is. I should do a video walkthrough, like a tight video walkthrough of this, but um, so I could communicate this more effectively. But D3D Simple is the most simple version of the 3D printer that we've done, which done, which is the three-axis system, and we've built that. We did it actually in Spain in a little workshop. It's really easy, and people basically designed it themselves, like really quickly in FreeCAD. And we were able to go through that in a day workshop. Um, that's D3D Simple. CNC circuit mill, we've built the circuit mill, for example, uh, same universal axis. This is how it looks in WebGL 3D. Um, so we do this kind of WebGL too, where we've got the guy that does this, he could explode this. This is, you know WebGL, what that is? It's, no. It's it's embeddable uh, HTML within the browser. This is just embedded HTML right here. You could do this kind of stuff using JavaScript. Um, but we did this circuit mill that pretty much yeah it looks like this it's once again the same universal axis but in different geometries um, so for milling circuits so we know how to do this but we wanted to do this simpler using etching the OSC 3d printer right now is um, that's what it looks like for our full version here just a sec yeah so that's kinda like we've got this full frame once again the same universal axis it's a uh, uh, we've got we we think we've got the only printer that's got a insulated heated bed. We actually started doing that right now. It's not actually not shown here, but we're kind of developing something so we can do like high temperature prints in an enclosure. So that's our next step. But we don't have to go there yet. Um, let's see the universal controller. Where is that thing? Universal power supply. Oh, I. Th Oh, I think I forgot to put in universe. Well, that, yeah. That, Go that ahead. heated bed that you mentioned. Yeah. I would just comment that if you're wanting to scale up to a larger size, then it might be a better idea to try to work out how to get it to work without a heated bed because it starts becoming a lot of power. It does. Like, um, like this, a cooking oven or something type of power levels if you want a heated bed for a large measure. No, it's true. It's true. I hear you on that. Um, we can do it for, yeah, we can do that. Um, and probably we can get away with that for PLA, but like we want to do a full industrial grade printer. So talking about peak and ultim for the high temperature materials, which you can't get away, I don't think, without a heated bed like that. But we could do things like have zones on the bed too, you know. So, yeah, that's a good plan. Yeah. So here's the universal controller. It's uh, once again, it's our co ramps controller. Uh, there's a st we got a solid state relay, small power supply, GFCI plug for plugging in other things and for safety because now we're running the bed at 120. Uh, we've got an LCD screen, but then you can replace for larger stepper drivers. Uh, you can add boards from the, you know, add modules where you, you're, say, controlling the welder, like off of this thing, just reprogram the Arduino. So that's the kind of stuff using this universal controller, the universal axis, and some other um, circuits and other things do all that crazy stuff that we're proposing. I just wanted to show you like what that all looks like. Um, DIY Arduinos are common, like um, 
yeah five dollars in parts like in this guy here uh, skip this but good. there's good prior oh. art like this I have like this guy right here like yeah I mean this is like you just take the chip and put a board around it for us we'd, we'd make an actual etched board so it doesn't look like this uh, but that's easily doable I mean it's essentially this a breakout for your microcontroller chip right um, that'll be the DIY Arduino but it'll be powerful because then we can use actually that controller to for example maybe in a drone or in a, a robot vacuum or whatever so circuit plotter you know stuff like that uh, basically a pen and, and circuit boards on the same XY axis um, showed you the stepper motor there's prior art for Raspberry Pi tablets and I talked to I talked to the you know the beagle bone I don't know that that's like you know Raspberry Pi right yeah Raspberry Pi is the proprietary version of beagle bone there's actually an open source version oh. of a micro processor computer like that which after I talked to the guy it's like wow that actually makes a lot of sense um, and it turns out that if you build a Raspberry Pi tablet we can design it such that it's completely retrofitable so instead of the Raspberry Pi you can do the open source version of the BeagleBone computer um, so that's cool um, 1860 650 battery pack so those are your your standard you know the 18650 batteries yes yeah so yes. these standard ones, but we will 3D print stuff around them to make viable battery packs. Um, I'm just going through all the prior art that there is. Um, there's robotic vacuum cleaner examples, open source drones. Um, thing we want to do like is a cordless welder, just like these guys. Uh, it's essentially a bunch of batteries in a controller, so we can do that simple experiment if we combine our battery packs in the workshop. Uh, battery charger for Arduino, simple extruder, super volcano, universal power supply. What's that? Um, that that's linked to our page. But yeah, that's that's kind of uh, the deal. Uh, there's a bunch of modules here, like you can see the full breakdown. But the idea right now is um, we we want to start attaching names. So actually, go go into that doc if you wouldn't mind, and we can actually start yeah. editing that because. Uh, I, I would like to ask you if there's any element of this that you'd feel good about teaching the rest of the people. So, so far, we've got, I think we're okay um, on the electric motor because uh, I got one of the guys who's a motor designer to, to do that, so I think we can do that. Uh, there's one guy, Thomas, and another guy, Billion. They're both professional designers on the motors. Let's see, where is that thing? Motor, right there. Um, so 3D printed motor. I have. So I'm going to put in red. Um, put these guys there. I because I think between these guys we've got it. Um, But what do we what do we have like D3D simple like that's Marchin that's me. Uh, we've got that thing, so I, I would have to like what we want to do is have a kickoff meeting where we prepare some of this content and then we start teaching each other. Um, my first question to you is: Do you have the time? Like, would you, would you be able to find nine days to teach? If you I would have to take time off of work. Is yeah. that doable for you? Like uh, in about three months or four months? I think it would be possible. Do you have any suggestions on, because we're all supposed to co-create, do you have a suggestion on how we can go around that? Like, do you think maybe we could do this in multiple meetings, like maybe weekends? I think that probably would work. Because yeah. a lot of people who would want to attend probably, uh, you know, they might have time restrictions too, but weekends generally people are more available. Yeah, yeah, that might be a solution around that. Uh, but we have to get together around that, because, yeah, it's probably much easier to find four weekends four or five weekends but the idea there is it's like wow that's that's such a long time does that work for the instructors says trade-offs um, universal access that's me um, let's see circuit plotter drone 
No, we don't have any people. I, I've talked to about six. The people we have is... Um, so the guy who did the, the WebGL that I showed you there, uh, his name is Michel. Uh, he was going to do something, possibly... We didn't talk about specific rules. He was somewhat interested in the electric motor, but there's a bunch of other stuff we need to... Uh, so there's Michel, there's Sebastian's team from... Um, the Axiom Open Source Cinema Project. Have you heard of those guys? No. Yeah, uh, that's uh, in a write-up there. There was a link to that. Um, well, that was the Axiom document. Yeah, I, yeah. Remember, I read the one that was Axiom. I yeah. don't remember the word open source cinema. Yeah, that that is that they're open source cinema. They they got a professional grade open source uh, camera. They're they're gonna start taking orders in about six months. But yeah, it's. That's a really good project. Um, but yeah, we got to start adding attaching names. So I just bas barely started here. We've got another potential candidate named Adam, who is more like about the team building part, which is not really represented anywhere here. Um, and there's another guy, Justin works with open source uh, IOT like aquaponic sensors but he was gonna take a look at the welder power controller um, actually designing the welder he's a bit into power electronics um, where is that Cir there's circuit where is that welder Uh, motor plus uh, there, okay. Um, power controller board, yeah. So Justin was going to take a look at that. Um, so there's a ton of stuff. Um, yeah. What would you like? <laughs> um, <laughs> building a well, team and looking for suggestions on more I people that we can bring in. Coil winding jig is something that I've built and used before. I could do that if you want. It's oh, not cool. very complicated, I would think. Okay. Um, and motor disk cam file, is that like you're wanting a CNC program for making a, a piece for the motor? Yeah. Or what is that one? Yeah. Yeah, that would be. probably do that if you, if, if you want, if somebody needs me to. Okay. Um, and uh, drone hardware is something that I would have some experience with. I could do some of that if that's needed. Uh, but if there's somebody drone? who's going to do that whole project, then that would also probably be better if one person did that whole project. I don't know. Right. Or, I mean, ideally, we would, you know, we collaborate as much as we can with different okay. people. Uh, I mean, if there's enough people, like, I'm not opposed to, like, if we build, it might turn out that we might get more than, like, initially I thought, okay, I need, like, six people to help out on this. But then I started breaking it down. It's like, okay, man, this is a lot. And there's a real challenge for uh, people having time, right? Uh, yeah. So I th I'm suspecting we might end up with 12 or more people, um, possibly more, where in that case, like the team building part and cooperation is really important. But I'm I seeing that, uh, that CNC mill quick attached tool head. Yeah. I don't, I don't already know how that would work, but that's something really interesting to me. I could at least try to come up with ideas to present about it if you want. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. Uh, let's see. Um, at the machines that I work with, there's uh, they have like rotating inventories of tools that they can change between, like an automatically uh, switching thing. I wonder if we could integrate that. With oh it. man, that's a, yeah, a, that's a tool changer. Yeah. Have you uh, seen machines like that? Oh yeah, of course. I mean, that's of course on my radar. I try to find. I, I found an amazing guy who did that for a larger machine, like a really professional system that was off the shelf ATC. Uh, you're familiar with all this stuff like ATC, right? With your programming? I don't know what ATC stands for, but I'm familiar automatic, with CNC stuff in general. Yeah, automatic, automatic tool change. changer. Yeah. Okay, yeah. Yeah. Is that like with uh, with airlines? Vacuum? Yeah, yeah, that's yeah. It? Okay, yeah. yeah that's, that's how they do it, but I mean, you can do it in many different ways. I saw the guys at the Midwest RepRap Festival that they have just a mechanical lock. Uh, the guys from E3D, um, 
extruder heads they're working on that and they're going to release that open source that i should check in with them but so you're saying like that's that's where i got you right uh quick, quick yeah. patch tool head I'll, I'll, I'll at least try i don't already know how to do that but i'll at least try yeah and then i have seen at the bottom there's work piece holder um that's like the type of stuff that i deal with every day so i could come up with a good solution for that cool um yep um Yeah, that's cool. That'll be cool. Um, so, am I saying the type of things that you're looking for, or is yeah. this not what you're looking for? Okay. No, that is. I mean, so here, what I try to do is take in the four-day curriculum and try to break it down. Well, not only the four. Well, well, I included the drone here. I did not include. Wait, did I include the Raspberry Pi tablet? No, that's not in here nor is the vacuum robot so we kind of thought on a team with a drone vacuum robot and raspberry pi tablet or, or a tablet as three valuable projects uh what do you think of those you think those are attractive to people so the raspberry Ti pi tablet and what were the other two a drone and then a vacuum robot okay so those are the ones that you in the thing that you say that you built in the last five days right yeah Okay. I think people would be interested in that. Yeah, that sounds really cool. Yeah, another attraction is they're all could be gift gift items too, so it's like, you know, talking about marketing a little bit. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that's that's really cool. So so what questions do you have regarding well I can tell I can start with that. The idea here is to integrate uh like the model here is the hardest that I thing I found that people have uh, an issue with is the idea of the product ecology because you're not just build uh, you know say a quick attach tool quick attach tool head okay how does it fit with the rest of the system so the first of all you'd be attaching it to the universal axis carriage piece because that's how we attach the the 3d print head or the pen plotter right so you'd have to think not only about that but okay there's the universal axis and if you're designing this attach system how does that relate to the attach system of the 3D printer and the pen plotter, which is, are the other two devices that go on to that, that CNC axis, right? So you kind of have to look at the whole system and looking at uh, what everybody else is doing. And, and that's, that's the hard part because you have to spend the time to learn that and, and look into that as opposed to just starting from scratch. But I'm absolutely open if you want to like improve the system. Yes, absolutely. But you can't improve the system without first analyzing industry standards, i.e. what we have done before, right? So does yes. that make sense? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So, it's, it, so that's why we're looking for cooperators, people who can work well and collaborate as a team and, and then teach, teach each other. Because today I actually started thinking along the lines of a mastermind. This is like, you know, we're actually teaching each other all this stuff. I can teach you a bunch of stuff. You can probably teach me a bunch of stuff. And that's kind of how we want to go into this altogether that part of the attraction is the learning experience yeah does that make sense yes good um how would you rate yourself in terms of open source how, how much do you value on a scale from like one to ten how you know how do you um i value it as ten but i also think that um a lot of people are just going to go buy something or, you know, it kind of depends how it fits in with the society. Like, so for example, you're talking about the Raspberry Pi tablet. I think that's really cool and it would integrate well with the other projects. But I also think for the most part, people are just going to get a computer and they're already going to have some type of a computer. Yeah. Yeah. In which case, like, th therefore a market is not everybody. It's, it's certain people. Yeah. But um, do you think there's enough of those people that want to build their own stuff? Um, I think that there's a lot of people, like you can look at the 3D printing stuff that you were talking about. A lot of people are interested in that for sure. And that's not like you can just go to Walmart and get that. Exactly. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. And then besides, uh, okay, so if you take a look at open source, what do you think is the biggest attraction for you to open source 
like why why do you value it because um, one part of it for us that we like to talk about a lot like if you talk about economic impact is lifetime design because if you understand it you can rebuild it you can improve it um, you can replace parts and if it's modular you can um, it's basically circular economy yes I really like that idea and not being dependent on uh, industry in the way it is right now being able to be do things on your own yeah do you think that this can have an impact on the economy like the or do you see do you see the link between this and actual impact because the way we'd like to position this is every steam camp we're improving the product so say we do our first raspberry pi tablet well we then the next one we improve it until the point that it becomes a really good product and it's it's something actually that people many more people would want to get so that means adding some value to it whether it's the education aspect maybe it turns into a raspberry pi with a phone or something or whatever it makes it very attractive but for us it's about developing real products that people can get financial independence from because we develop the products collaboratively to the point that they're really viable and in fact we wanted to have the day number nine one where we actually talk about and develop the enterprise aspects so things like doing a product page on a website that is open it's distributive it's we're saying you can take that you can make it you can sell it. it's fully open source so we open source both the design and the business around it any comments I'm thinking about if I have any comments I'm liking a lot of what you're saying I'm just uh, thinking processing that yeah yeah no cuz cuz see the thing that's absolutely different is that for us we're saying hey we gotta there's enough for everybody no problem um, you know the concept Kardashev scale yes what does that imply about whether there's enough for everybody on this planet? I think that there's enough for everybody because I don't know what to say. It's just my observation of the, econo the economy and all the available resources is that there's way more than enough that anybody's ever going to need. That's absolutely right. And Kardashev scale, to me, that is like the fact that there's 10,000 times more power that comes from the sun than we use today. So, yeah, you better believe it. We can make the world 10,000 times better if we decided to apply that energy to, to positive things and providing for everybody and educating everybody and getting rid of all the world problems. Yeah. So that's that's the way we talk. And we want to really walk the walk on that. And we're saying, OK, we're going to develop enterprise. We're going to develop products um, and frame it as it's a plat we're developing a platform for open source product development so if we can get more people doing this like people like yourself doing it and out of this it turns out hey uh, I can now start building this micro factory and I can start producing things and generating um, like rebuilding my own community to be more reliant productive like um, that's what we'd like to see and we see that the impact of that can be profound. Like people can get economic freedom by participating in open source design, and they they, they could be making it, uh, and then pursuing. Like our our idea is that hey, technology should make life easy. We should be pursuing exactly what our true interests are, as opposed to just making a living. And that's that's the kind of uh, positioning we're trying to uh, add to this is that we can really take control of the economy. Um, in a much more distributed way. So I had a thought, I guess, um, what you're asking me, why do I value the open source idea and, and what you're doing? And I think that a lot of times if somebody has an idea, the way things are now, you have to protect it, keep it secret, and work on it and try to control the idea yourself. But if there's more of a sharing and open source um, type of a structure that can build up, then people could work together a lot more ideas could produce more quickly and help people a lot faster and I think that's what I really am most impressed with about what you're trying to do absolutely I'm glad you see that 
because unfortunately I have not heard I mean literally I have heard nobody like you know the biggest leaders you know like Diamandis you know th those guys you know like Peter Diamandis uh, founder of the X Prize you know people like there's people who talk about big change but none of them actually talking that hey we should actually collaborate we should actually find mechanisms where uh, society instead of competing collaborates uh, where we replace proprietary development with collaborative development gee what an idea but it's really funny to me that nobody like I haven't heard anybody produce serious really discussion on that have you like people who really I mean I, I see you I guess <laughs> I mean there you know there's various uh, cooperatives around the world but yeah not on a full civilization scale okay but check this out I'll even uh, I'll even rib you on the cooperatives did you know that like most cooperatives are proprietary they don't share I do, to the I'm not sure I don't like, know for example Mondragon is the biggest cooperative they're nothing they have nothing to do with open source all their products are proprietary so um, I think a lot of people don't recognize this but in order to change the world you um, like cooperative is about I call it literally like a proprietary consortium because that's exactly what what it is economically it's not an open consortium um, but you have to have open and collaborative like I guess the shortcoming of the the co-ops typically is that they I haven't seen an open source an open source co-op with any open source products yet um, Oh, let's see, open source co-op. There, are, I think I heard the term open source co-op. I'm, I'm just saying it's like, no, like the P2P Foundation people, they talk about open cooperatives, but their license is proprietary. So, get you know, what, oh, what's going on? Anyway, so so in other words, the world has a lot to go in terms of making it truly a collaborative society. Because even the people, the socialist guys. Uh, there's not a lot of open source socialists. They they don't talk about open source. So, so um, I think more of the capitalists talk about open source actually than socialists. In fact, um, but we don't we we're you know we work with everybody. We we don't pick any sides. We're <laughs> we're uh, an apolitical, a religious organization. <laughs> we just believe in open source as helping everybody. Yeah. Anyway, uh, that's yeah. No, but I'm glad you say that. Um, yeah, we can do so much more with that if we simply coll collaborate. And I'm glad you're pointing that because that I think that points to that you have thought about it enough that uh, you can appreciate it. But most people, unfortunately, don't really even think about it. They don't think it's possible. So yeah, that's where we're at. But it sounds like uh, we would be glad to have you on the team if you can produce some of the things and and cooperate with us and yeah and do that okay so i guess i'd be happy to start um i saved a screenshot of where you were marking up the names i'd be happy to start trying to figure out what i can contribute on those things where you had my name yeah and then report back to you what i can do and then even yeah. if i can contribute something and i don't end up being an inspector or whatever i'd be happy to just do something at least do what i can to help you yeah yeah that would be great and um but other than that i mean you'd You'd like to, you'd definitely like to do this. Would you ever, um, so, so for example, you have, um, you know, you have a job, right? Would you, would this yes. be more attractive to you or you'd plan on keeping like, your job? Forever? Would it be like a full time opportunity? I don't know, like what your long term plans are as far as doing multiple classes or what that is. Yeah, it would be to get to a point, um, ideally, a person would run a class every month. And it, oh, may, well. it might, um, uh, I think the way I see it is maybe quarterly quarterly cycles, but then there's going to be derivatives of what happens from this. We'll probably end up doing like different versions of events. We'll probably end up making kits and other things such that, uh, I mean, we'd like to have the people who are instructors, and it's like depends who it is, but uh, some people might do it once and then we never see them again. Other people might, I mean, we'd like people to stay on, because the growth opportunity is there. Like the, the growth opportunity there is that, one, you can start this and then start doing it full time as time goes on, and then either continue with us or branch off if you don't like us anymore. If you can think you could do better on your own or whatever, but 
the idea would be that we all get to build a micro factory in our own community where it's a real hub of open source product development, like a point of light for any community out of which it really becomes an effective incubator of a lot of different open source business that reinvents the, the local economy. That's our long-term vision. So there's a definite um, growth trajectory. Uh, for us, we'd like to make whole campuses, education campuses, that are like a university, but you can also live there. So like, uh, you know, I live on this 30 acres. I'd like to make a, what would be like a, we call it OSC campus, but it would have education and real life in it. So it's like an intentional community, but it's more structured like a university, uh, like a university campus or like a Google campus, you know. Uh, but it it does more than just like the education also is land based so it has uh, participation with nature and agriculture so it's basically like a village it's like a global village of tomorrow it's a it's a point of light so I'd like to build a bunch of these uh, with well I can't do it myself I'll build one or two I'd like to build at least here but I'd like to spread that so uh, basically we can educate everybody it will be a definitely focused around education that's that's our main line of business but we also do production, you know, we, the stuff we do is very productive, like uh, starting up enterprises that produce things from 3D printers to tractors to cars to houses. Um, I don't know, have you seen any of our work? Like we can build our tractors in a day and the houses that we build in like five days. So with group, large groups of people, like 50 people in five days, we can build a house, uh, get a group of 12 people together. We can build a tractor in a day and things like that. So. Uh, we're trying to in innovate on the way that economic production happens, not only in just factories, but social production events. So that's that's our model. Very cool. So yeah, I guess uh, I would like to start by just seeing what I'm able to contribute, if I'm able to actually be of any value to you or not. And if yeah. I am, then I would be willing to you know, get more involved and work more from there. Or if not, then I'll just contribute what I can and somebody else can take over. Yeah, that would be great. Someone else can build their um, okay, well, if you do that, can you uh, just get an account on the wiki so that you can and set up, uh, and I can send you more info on that, but basically go to like start a page called Jacob Log. So, for example, like if you go to the wiki, uh, we all keep logs and we put a time graph in there. So, um, let me show you this. That, this is my log and I actually keep a. That's my log, but I just put links like day, day by day log and I just put everything that I do so it's transparent. Um, there's a time log there like where all the developers that we have they contribute. But I'd like you I'd like to ask you to just start a log, which would be Jacob log. Okay. And then I'll give you an embed for a time graph so you can just keep track of time because we're trying to keep track of overall development time. Uh, for for the records of the project as we're trying to save the world and <laughs> show a show a case where we can actually make open source hardware work as a, as an economic paradigm so we're trying to keep records like that but I'd like to ask you if you can just start your log and start lo also logging your hours and that would help uh, that, that, that makes the process transparent so once we get um, all the people on like for example Michel log like if you go to Michel log he's got his log of what he's doing he's one of the guys uh, but I haven't asked the other guys yet because we're just initial forming stages for the team but I'd like to get the whole team up in about two weeks so that about three weeks or so we would have a kickoff meeting and then we would start really uh, getting excited about all that we can do because I think it's really powerful to I mean we're trying to put put together a really good team really good team of people uh, it's really A players and all that. But take a look at Michel Log, for example. That's another log. Uh, he's got his hours that he hasn't been keeping track of. Um, but he's been doing, for example, the WebGL embeds there, like you can see on his on his log. Um, but yeah, if you could do that, that'd be awesome. And then when we have this diagram, like you saw with all the breakdown, we would actually just put a link like to your name, it would go to your log, and then everybody can get oriented what where what everybody else is doing. Yeah. And last, um, 
Can you do that? Uh, yeah, I'll make the log. Excellent. Uh, last thing I want to tell you about is next year we're actually pr planning a, a big um, incentive challenge where we put up a contest to build the world's first open source 3D printed cordless drill from scrap. So in other words, plastic recycling infrastructure is part of that challenge, but we're going to offer a big reward on Hero X. We're looking at like 250000 and um, for the world to develop a professional grade cordless drill. So that means also the micro factory that makes it. So that means the 3D printer that's used there, like the coil winding jig would be in there if we make our motors. I'm not sure if we're gonna make our own motors, we might just get them off shelf. Uh, I'd like to have them be built uh, from 3D printed material. Um, but we'll have plastic recycling as part of the infrastructure so that you're taking literally like whatever scrap ABS or whatever and returning that into ABS filament that you're printing your cordless drill with but that challenge is coming up we're going to launch that september of 2020. um but i just wanted to let you know like like the steam camps are also intended so that if anybody wants to participate in that challenge they will have full background training how to work in open source product development as a large team because the incentive challenge will be people have to upload and download things constantly um it's going to be a challenge of how do you coordinate like a thousand people to work on the same design, you know, like, man, that's going to be crazy. So we're going to have to develop the techniques of transparent working. And a big part of that is keeping the logs and uploading designs as soon as you have them, because we're, we're twisting the rules that it's absolutely collaborative. You're rewarded for cooperating. It's not a typical contest where people compete against each other. It's about stacking effort, so that's the way we're going to do that. just wanted to let you know, because that, that's part of the framework for the STEAM camps, is that we're training people to participate effectively in the, in the design challenges. All right. Thank you for telling me all that. Um, cool. So I guess what, what you want me to do first is to make the log. Yep. And, okay. I'll get you the... I'll just start. Yeah, loading the information event. onto there of what I've done. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, uh, so first review what we've got, the universal axis and the blueprints for that. And, um, yeah, and think of a good design. We've done a uh, magnetic mount for the the universal axis, but believe it or not, I don't know if you... Uh, do you have a 3D printer? Yes. Uh, what we found out was when we did the magnetic mount for the 3D printer, it would mess up the cooling fan. So... In the last version that we did, we, we scrapped the magnetic mount on the 3D printer head uh, because the way we had it, it was actually blocking out the print cooling fan. Like, uh, no, actually the extruder fan. We used the Prusa extruder and that, that, that just didn't work with the magnetic mount. So we got rid of the magnetic mount. But we can revisit the magnetic mount or maybe do something simpler, like a simple bolt. Because probably for the milling, you want to have... Uh, the magnetic mount may be a part of it, but you have to probably have some lock-in where uh, you make sure you don't lose the head if you bump something. Uh, but anyway, yeah, yeah, start thinking about it and doing that, looking into that. That'd be great. So I'll check it. I'll keep checking in with you. What what I'll do is uh, I'll send an email to all the people that are on board so far and kind of introduce everybody. Uh, that's why you have your log. I'll post your video so other people can can view it. Um, and then just start coordinating um, and see who's, who makes it uh, to the actually running the event. But it sounds like, uh, you know, you're interested in learning. Uh, it sounds like you'd be a good fit, so I, I'd like to see if you can uh, possibly run one. Okay. Um, so have I provided you the information that you were watching, or have I responded to you? Like, is there anything else that you need from me right now? Yeah, yeah, I think so. I think that's about it. Let's see anything else about asked you about open source. Um, yeah, so what, what's your take on the economic freedom aspect of this? Is that something that is attractive or that's something you're not thinking about for, with this? Um, that is something that's, are you talking about for me personally or for everyone? For with you that personally. Question? Um, that is attractive to me to, uh, well, I guess my plans with what I was doing before is I'm just earning money so that I can then uh, move to a slightly more remote piece of land that I've already purchased and be basically independent there. Do so have, I guess. Yeah. Do you have the land already? Yes. How many acres? Five. That's around. Let's see. You are. You're in. In um. Where are you? In Washington State, United States. 
Uh, top left corner of the United States. Oh, wow. Top left. Uh, you're like in Seattle or? Uh, yeah, north of Seattle. Oh, yeah, my brother's out there working for Microsoft, believe it or not. Um, oh, cool. <laughs> yeah. Um, they're the number one supporter of open source now. Before, they used to think open source was a, was a plague. <laughs> but anyway, that's cool. So that's awesome. Yeah. Um, sounds like you can use our tractor later on. Yeah. I I was really impressed when I saw that on there, like uh, the pictures that you put up of it. Yeah. Because that was one of the things that's really expensive that I'm going to need. I was thinking I'd just have to rent or something. Yeah, no, you'll, you'll build it like... Um, You'll build it. It's going to be cheaper, 10 times cheaper. Well, lifetime, 10, 10 times cheaper, definitely. Up front, it won't be 10 times cheaper. It might be a couple of times cheaper. Um, but over lifetime, yeah, it's very easily 10 times because it's designed for lifetime. You can do anything with it over life. Uh, so, but so, sorry, I kind of cut you off on that. So you, your plan was you, you so you can live out there? Um, yeah, you didn't cut me off. Okay. I mean, I don't, I don't think you want full detail of what I was planning to do. But yeah, basically independently live out there. Uh-huh. Off-grid? Um, um, Off-grid, I was planning on building a solar thermal generator and having a, a large automated greenhouse. Solar thermal generator? Uh, using what, what yeah. technology? Well, uh, long parabolic troughs with either water flowing through them or another medium to carry heat to the water and then using that to generate steam to run a turbine and then Recondensing as much of the steam as possible into like a cool vat. Uh huh. So, are you talking about a turbine, not a modern yeah, a turbine. engine? Um, well, either way, but I think a turbine would be more efficient. Well, basically, uh, the numbers are that below 500 horsepower, steam engines are more efficient than turbines. Okay, that's good to know. So, I hadn't realized that. Yeah, you, you don't want to go to a turbine on a small scale. You do want to go on a modern steam engine, which you can. If you do that properly, it's very easy to get 10% and higher efficiency, like even from very simple systems. Yeah, like I'd like to do a basically Arduino controlled uh, solenoid activated steam engine, which is super simple. You're just l letting the steam in for a certain amount of time uh, using an Arduino controller. So on our on our plate, yeah, that's that's attractive to us. The modern steam engine is part of the Global Village construction set. Yes, we do believe in the linear solar concentrators. We'd like to see that. Um, if you haven't heard of saturated water, have you heard of that? Is that like water that's above boiling point and then it flash, flashes to steam or what is that? Yeah, it is. It is. It's water that's about 200 C and under 200 PSI. And we're looking at that. That's called saturated water. And we're looking at that as the storage medium of choice. It's, um, I believe that's more effective than batteries because batteries aren't particularly sustainable. So we're looking at that as our main uh, long term, like we don't have that right now, but right now we're just using batteries. Like I'm off grid on this house here, but we're just using lead acid batteries. But yeah, saturated water. Uh, let me, sh let me sh uh, Terra Jewel, take a look at this. Uh, that's what they do. Uh, but take a look at that for inspiration. Um, well, Terra Jewel. Terra Jewel, you said. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Yes. Yeah, satur and saturated. Wa they use saturated water. We've got some wiki pages on that. Uh, here's a link in case you can't find it. I met the guy. Um, and that's how I actually found out about saturated water. But nobody's talking about it, I think, because most people are doing groupthink. I think most people are into the the battery future. I call it kind of groupthink because I don't think batteries. No, but maybe we come up with some better battery technology. But right now, um, I think saturated water is easier and better. Yeah, batteries are expensive, and I think the main drawback with them is that they don't have know the lifetime you know within 10 years you probably have to replace them yeah at least that's been my experience with them I have a small greenhouse solar powered right now and it seems like the batteries um, you know they're not so great they're just okay yeah let me send you a page called saturated water yeah well hopefully we can uh, collaborate on this but yeah you're the you'd be an ideal person like get freed up and start working on this full-time not like in your spare time um, so, uh, take a look at that saturated water link on the wiki. I go through okay. some numbers. 
but those are the real numbers there so take a look at it um, yeah and Terra Jewel is a company that's actually there um, they're doing some of these systems but I talked to the guy and he said nobody wants to invest in it because right now like anything solar is kind of like taboo in an investment world no it's just group think I think uh, but anyway uh, I think that's the saturated water between that I personally like hydrogen um, so anyway I gotta get going hydrogen oh, okay yeah splitting okay. splitting water because you can do oxyhydrogen um, steam uh, oxyhydrogen torches for cutting which are really clean and efficient using once again your water you know abundant resources so you got to split the water but oxyhydrogen I believe that and also compressed for cars like you can burn hydrogen in regular car engines right now so I'd like to do that as well um, but yeah I like hydrogen and I like water those are quite abundant um, we have to get into the scarce resources like lithium but that's cool man so thank you thank you for your time and uh, I yeah, thank you. going because I'm actually talking to another guy from Seattle right now. Uh, Great. So, yeah. Well, yeah. Thanks. Uh, yeah. See what you can do and see how this evolves, and I'll keep you involved in uh, in the uh, email threads. I'll will start that and introduce you to everybody else. Sounds good. Have a good day. Thanks, Jacob. Bye. -bye.